Hello internet friends. Today I have a question for a friend of mine. How to deal with others not meeting your expectations. Uh, this is in the backdrop of sort of a group setting, right? So, uh, you know, you're working on a project at work or you're, you know, doing some sort of activity with friends or whatever it is where you have a group of people who are working together to try to achieve a goal. Um, and you set some expectations for yourself and by extension for others and it's they're just not they're just not getting met it's just not getting done which is a tricky situation uh, i am a try hard pretty much anything that i'm doing i'm trying to do it as well as i possibly can um for no other reason than that's the way that i like to live and be a human being it's fun to test oneself against the circumstances presented by the world and see see how far you can run with it um, and it's very tempting if you have that disposition to just project that out onto others. Well, if I should meet a certain set of standards, then everyone should surely, right? Um, especially because very often that gets tied up in our sense of self-worth or self-respect for us. And then we just naturally assume other people are having the same experience. Yeah. Yeah. The key here is the experience of dissatisfaction. You want to do this thing with the group. You want to achieve some goal and it feels like other people aren't pulling their weight and that's not fair. Uh, my personal experience with this, the, the starkest experience I had of this and the one that caused me uh, to really reflect on it is that I took a course in college called Problem Solving Seminar. And this was a class where we would get, it was a math class, it was a math major, and we would get, you know, five to eight problems assigned to us a week. And if you could solve a single problem working in a group, you got an A uh, for that week. And all of the midterms, group work. All of the final, group work. And all of this was with assigned groups. So at the beginning of class, the professor just said, hey, everybody give me your schedule. And he just went through and matched everybody to somebody who had a similar schedule to them. So in theory, be maximally available to work together. Um, in practice, sometimes that didn't work out super great. In my case, I was assigned to work with two people and neither one of them solved a single problem the entire semester or even worked particularly hard. Uh, most of the time they didn't show up to our scheduled meeting times. They never showed up to work on the midterm or the final. They didn't even show up for the session where we had decided that I would show them the problems that I had solved for the midterm in case the professor decided to make one of them present it instead of me. Kind of the bare minimum. If I'm doing all of the work to get you an A, can you at least show up to not make it obvious um, that only one of us knows what the heck is going on so that we don't all get failed? Um, so I was living in an experience of deep deep dissatisfaction around that. Um, and what that led to was that at the end of the term, um, I got a C in that class and they both got A's because of course I was so irritated that I just didn't participate in class because the context caused me such a deep frustration that I was just, I was just big mad the whole time. Right? Even though it was the best class I ever took, it's the sort of thing that, you know, I wish everybody could have an opportunity to take a class like that because the, the cognitive techniques that are taught for the purposes of mathematical problem solving are actually really portable. It's a really cool course. If you get a chance to take a, a problem solving seminar as offered by a, a mathematician, jump on it. But what I sort of learned from that uh, is that it other people can have markedly different goals. So one of the people in my group um, was a foreign student who was, as far as I could tell, staggeringly wealthy. Just her family had a boatload of money. Uh, and for the purposes of uh, marriage and politics, she needed to have a degree from a U.S. university. And for whatever reason, she chose mathematics, but she, mathematics is, it, I don't know, prestige or something, wasn't interested in it. Uh, and another person was a finance major who needed a piece of paper so that he could go make money. So both of them, their goals was just to put the minimum into this class and get through it. 
And my goal was to solve every single problem and totally ace everything. Uh, and I was unwilling to take the time to attend to what their goals were. And that was a huge part of my dissatisfaction. If I just clocked what was going on right at the start, I could have either communicated with the professor more effectively or, um, you know, communicated with more of my, my classmates. I ended up sitting in with a bunch of them, but, you know, probably not as often as I should have. But because I had internalized so deeply my standard for myself and then projected it out to others, it was really unpleasant. Um, and that's a situation that's sort of analogous to the sort of thing that you find yourself in when you're, when you're doing something for school or work where you have to get the goal done. But even within that, there's a lot of wiggle room. How, how far do you have to get the goal done? You know, what, is there uh, some threshold that you just have to meet or do you just have to go as far as you can? Understanding that and understanding how other people are engaging with it can offer a vision of a little bit of wiggle room there um, emotionally. Because it's, if you apply your standards to other people, you're going to be dissatisfied. Um, so if you reject that process, that projection, and simply say, this is how I want to be, and I recognize that other people are going to want to be different, then you leave a lot less ground for that, well, this isn't fair process to get started. And this isn't fair is useless. The universe doesn't care about fairness. There's no indication anywhere that fairness has ever been a major consideration in anything outside of a kindergarten classroom. Um, so the, the quicker you can give up the idea of fairness, uh, probably the happier you're going to be. Because you, if your happiness is contingent upon the world being fair, you're going to be consistently dissatisfied. Um, but sometimes, you know, going a little bit further than that, uh, sometimes you don't actually have to meet the goal. There are a lot of things that we do in groups together where the purpose is to be with the group, not to meet some goal. And that's a great opportunity to practice um, not allowing the environment to determine your goals and your standards when you're interacting. So if you're in a situation where you know that your internal tryhard is going to want a min-max performance and make everything go super great, and, and other people maybe don't have that thing in mind, that's a place to revisit the goal. Because the goal doesn't have to be to get the thing done. If the thing is optional, if you're just here to have a good time, you know, with your friends and do some activity, um, you can reject that externally determined goal and just substitute in an internally determined goal. So one that I like for myself is I'm, I'm just going to try to do the best that I can because I like to do that. It just makes me happy and not worry about whether or not we succeed. I'm just going to find some metric of success that's individual and, and work on maximizing that to the extent uh, that it's fun for me uh, while you know doing the best that I can to contribute towards the actual goal of the group, nominal goal of the group. Right? Very often the goal of the group is just to kind of hang out and shoot the shit, right? If, if we're not in a work or academic context. Just recognizing that, um, that if I only focus on what I'm doing individually, I don't have to worry about fairness and I don't have to worry about success. I just have to worry about applying myself as best as I can within this context and measuring that according to my own lines. And to take that a little bit further, if you're willing to, to do a little bit of, you know, cognitive practice uh, to work on your own well-being while you're shooting the shit and whatnot, you can make the goal to maintain a positive frame of mind while doing this thing. The thing that's being done can become a challenge in that it is consuming a bunch of your cognitive resources and you can practice carving out enough of a reserve of resources to actively manage your own state to be present for the arising of things like it's not fair or I have to work harder or etc etc that sort of standards projecting process that's really easy to slip under the radar if we've trained for an entire lifetime to practice that and then we're spending most of our resources trying to achieve some task uh, 
to keep enough in reserve, to have enough in the tank, to really track that and divert that, and say, yeah, that's not what I'm doing here, I'm not interested in that, I'm here to do the best that I can while maintaining a positive frame of mind, and it can become a tremendous practice opportunity to reshape the way that we respond to sort of challenging or stressful situations where a lot is being demanded of us in terms of performance. Can we make habitual the practice of always retaining a reserve, of saying, look, the amount that I'm willing to put into performance is this much and no further because I need to have enough cognitive resources available to make sure that I'm in a good place, right? to make sure that I'm having a good time. Because when we're doing something that is optional, having a good time, being happy, hopefully is a major consideration. Um, you know, if you're doing something that's optional and not fun, stop doing it. Really, uh, having a good time with your free time has to be at, <laughs> at the core of your considerations when uh, you're electing to do something with a group of people. So to sum up, um, you know, where you are forced to work with people to achieve a goal, um, be mindful of what other people are bringing to the table. Uh, are they trying to maximize the goal or are they trying to do the absolute minimum that gets them through this experience. For many people, it's going to be the absolute minimum in both academic and work contexts, uh, and for sometimes perfectly legitimate reasons. Um, you know, you don't always have to drink the Kool-Aid when you're involved in a group activity. And then within that, you know, recognize that the goal itself may allow you some degrees of freedom in terms of how hard you have to work towards it. Sometimes it's, it is actually perfectly acceptable to just get over the hump and say, okay, well, that's enough. I don't need to put any more into this. Sometimes it may be worthwhile to go as hard as you can and just drive you know, success as far as you can take it. Uh, but be mindful of that. Don't always just assume that we have to go all the way all the time. Uh, and, you know, immediately, first step, let go of any notion of fairness because... The universe doesn't care and most people aren't motivated by it. So it doesn't, it doesn't actually serve your well-being to be concerned with whether or not what you're experiencing is fair. Um, save those resources for, uh, for making your own happiness within this context more possible. Uh, and if you're doing something that is elective, if you don't have to be meeting this group goal, open up to the possibility of of defining a different goal for yourself for your participation. So really explore the possibility of making staying in a positive mental frame a major focus of your efforts, and then within that, doing as well as you can to the extent that that serves your happiness.